Hey, welcome back. Today we'll talk about combinations with restrictions. So, so far we have talked about uh, trying to enumerate the number of combinations of various kinds. This one is slightly different in that it imposes a certain restriction on the allowed combinations. So, here is a prototypical problem it says find the number of strings of length n consisting of zeros and ones in which you do not have two successive ones. Okay, so, let us try uh, and uh, write down a few such examples. Now, what are such strings? So, let us say okay, what is n here? n of course, is the length of the string. So, the length of the string could be 1, 2, 3 and so on. So, let us do the following. Let us write down a table. Four and so on, and for each value of n, let's first enumerate the strings which are allowed in the sense they satisfy the required restriction. So, if I only have a string of length one consisting of a zero or a one, well, there are two possibilities. I can just take the string which uh, just has a zero, or I can take the string which just has a one. So, both of these are al are allowed strings because you do not have two successive ones appearing. Okay, so, let us do uh, the case n equals 2. So, I have a string of length 2. So, I could have 0 0 or I could have 0 1 or I could have 1 0. Now, the fourth possibility which is 1 1 is no longer allowed in this case because you have two successive ones. Okay. Now, let us do maybe one more 3 string of length 3 you can have all 3 zeros. You can have 0 0 1. Uh, let us see, I can have 0, 1, 0. Now, let us maybe I will write all of them down and we will get rid of the ones that do not satisfy the constraint. So, 0, 1, 1, and then I have 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, um, 1, 1, 1. So, I also have 1, 1, 0, and then I have 1, 1, 1. So, let us see, we got uh, 6 plus 2, 8, that is the total number out of which we need to disallow 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1, 1. Okay. They are not, uh, they, they contain two successive ones and so let us also do the following. Let us count the total number of strings. Okay. So, let us say the number of such strings of allowed strings. So, let us call this number something, let us call this f of n. So, remember the number of allowed strings depends on n of course. So, let us call this number f of n. So, so here it is 2, uh, f of 2 is 3, there are 3 allowed strings, f of 3 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and so on. Okay. So, so far we have figured out what happens in the initial cases. Now, to really understand what is going on, let us try and do the case n equals 4. So, as you can see enumerating these strings gets harder and harder, but let us sort of see the pattern that uh, uh, that can be obtained from this. So, if you take n equals 4, what you are looking for is a string of length 4. So, maybe we will do it here. So, I, I need a string of length 4 with zeros and 1s. So, of course, the first very first entry in the string is either a 0 or a 1. So, there is a bunch of strings which start with a 0 and then here is the other possibility. So, let me write down case 1 and case 2, things which start with a 0 and strings which start with a 1. Now, suppose the string starts with a 0, what does it, what does it tell you about the remaining 3 places? So, what do you do with the remaining 3 slot, uh, remaining three slots? Well, observe that the condition says you cannot have 2 successive 1s. But, well, the first entry being a 0, that says that the next entry can be pretty much anything you want. Right? It could be a 0 or a 1, for instance. And then you have another entry and another entry. So, observe that these three entries have the following property that this must be an allowed string, meaning it should not contain. So, this must be an allowed string of well of one smaller length of length 3. Okay, so, this is case 1. If your string starts with a 0, then what follows it must be an allowed string of length 3 okay, without two successive ones. Now, case 2 is the following. 
if the string starts with a 1, then what can one say about what follows it? Let us look at the constraint. It says that you cannot have two successive 1s in your string. So, since the first entry is a 1, this had better be a 0. Okay. So, the first two entries get determined and now observe that what follows. So, now that I have a 0, the next entry can be a 0 or a 1. So, what, what we have in these two slots had better be an allowed string of length 2. Okay. So, this tells you how to go about enumerating all these strings. What you would do is the following. In order to write down all strings of length 4, you start with the allowed strings of length 3. So, let us let us get rid of the ones that are not allowed. So, here are the 5 allowed strings of length 3 and to each of them you will adjoin a 0 in front. Okay. So, let us take all these guys and prefix each of them with a 0. So, I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. So, I will ri first write the ones of length 3 and prefix each of them with a 0. Okay. So, these are 5 strings of length 4 which begin with a 0 and in addition you also have the ones which with uh, which begin with a 1 and in fact those must begin with a 1 0 as we just saw. So, what you now do for these guys in case 2, you go one level lower, you look at the allowed strings of length 2 and you prefix each of them with a 1 0. Okay. So, I had these 5, then let me write strings of length 2 0 0, 0 1, 1 0 and I prefix each of them with a 1 0. So, what you get are essentially these two cases and that makes for easy enumeration. So, what is the total number here? Well, observe it is the number of allowed strings in the one preceding level plus the number of guys in two steps before it. So, this number is actually 8 and how did we obtain this? Well, it is the one preceding number plus the number which came two steps before it. Okay. So, this analysis in fact tells us the following. Observe what have we just shown. We have realize the following that f of n is just the sum of the two preceding numbers. Okay. And well of course, this only makes sense if n is at least uh, let us see n is at least a 3. So, in order to compute f of 3, f of 4 and so on all you need to do is just take the sum of the two preceding guys. Okay. And in addition what else do we have? We also know the first two values of f for instance f of 1 we know is a 2 and f of 2 we know is a 3. Okay. So, these two are often called the initial conditions, the initial values if you wish, these are the initial values and this relation here, well it is appeared several times before in our lectures. So, we have had occasion to encounter these guys when we talked about for instance the Chebyshev polynomials where of course, all these guys are actually polynomials in a variable x, here they are numbers. These also appeared when we were doing the problem of counting monomials in uh, uh, polynomials of many variables, counting monomials of a given degree, those were again given by a recurrence relation. So, this uh, equation here is what is usually called a recurrence relation, which determines a certain term of the sequence in terms of the preceding terms. Okay. Now, here is the, the problem that we would really like to understand. How do we find a formula for f of n? So, find a formula for f of n. Okay. It is easy to write down the initial values, right? You just keep adding it is uh, whatever 2, 3, 5, 8, 8 plus 5, 13, 21, 34, and so on. But what we want is given n a formula which tells you what f of n is. Okay. So, here is a slightly more uh, general problem uh, which basically concerns recurrence relations. If you are given arbitrary uh, recurrence relations with say even coefficients in front, one can still use uh, a similar approach to solve it. So, let me pose a more general problem. So, here is a more general problem.
So, given uh, a recurrence relation, so given a sequence of numbers f of n, n greater than equal to 1, which satisfies, suppose a sequence f of n satisfies, a recurrence relation f of n is given by some a times f of n minus 1 plus b times f of n minus 2. So, this is for n at least 3 and what are a and b? a and b can be arbitrary real numbers or complex numbers and so on, some constants and with some initial conditions. So, and of course, I need to tell you what f of 1 and f of 2 are. Okay? So, f of 1 is given to be some number p, f of 2 is given to be some number q. Okay? And the problem now is to find a formula for f of n. So, find a formula for f. So, let us try and do this. So, the key observation is the following, well one of the key observations. So, here is a key fact concerning sequences given by recurrences. If suppose you have another sequence f of n, okay, so I am calling capital F or maybe I will call it g of n. So, suppose I have another sequence g of n which satisfies the same recurrence and the same initial conditions satisfies the same recurrence as f and has the same initial values as f, then g and f are in fact equal. Okay. So, what it says is the recurrence relation together with the initial conditions uniquely determines the, the sequence f and it is sort of easy to see why because the first two values are the same for both g and f and how you form the successive values is also the same, it is given by the same prescription. So, for instance in this uh, example that's, that we just talked about, if g of n is the sum of the two preceding values and the first two values are 1 and 2 or let us say 2 and 3, then there is only one way in which you can you can determine the values of g. right? So, you have 2 and 3 are the starting values, so the next value must be a 5, the next value must be an 8, the next value must be a 13 and so on. So, it is force, there is pretty much no choice at all here. Okay? So, this is one uh, elementary but uh, very useful observation and so here is the, here is another somewhat more surprising observation, so not, not so obvious at first. So, here is uh, an approach to solving this, this recurrence, consider, so here is the very interesting ingredient here, consider the quadratic equation. Okay. So, observe we, we assume that f satisfies the recurrence uh, f of n equals a times f of n minus 1 plus b times f of n minus 2. Okay? Now, here is the, the following thing that we do, we take those sa same numbers a and b and then form a quadratic equation, right? x square as x square equals a x plus b. So, observe this is just another way of saying x squared minus a x minus b is 0. Okay? So, maybe we could do that, let us do, let us write this as x squared minus a x minus b equals 0 and let us pick a root of this equation. So, a quadratic equation has two roots, of course the roots could be complex numbers, but never mind. So, let r be a root of this equation, let r be a root. So, you pick one of the two roots, then and consider uh, define a sequence g of n as follows, just take powers of r, just call it r power n for all n at least 1. Okay. So, what we have done so far is to take a root of the quadratic equation and you form a sequence. Now, of course, the sequence is a sequence in general of complex numbers, but never mind. So, you have a sequence, the claim is that 
in fact g satisfies the recurrence of f. So, g of n is exactly a times g n minus 1 plus b times g n minus 1 n greater than equal to 3. So, here is a surprising fact that the, the sequence g of n that we have constructed actually satisfies the recurrence that we began with okay? and the proof is more or less straightforward. So, observe this equation. So, we just need to show that this equation holds. So, this equation is just the following equation that this is r power n, this guy is r to the n minus 1, that is r to the n minus 2 and of course, this equal you know this is all we need to check is this is this true and just observe that if you cancel off an r to the n minus 2 from both sides, this equation just is the same as r squared equals a r plus b. How do you get this? By cancelling of a common factor of r to the n minus 2 from both sides of the equation. And of course, that was the beginning assumption on r that it is a root of that equation. Okay? So, of course, the proof is very simple. Once we know the, uh, once we know what we want to prove, it is rather trivial to see that it is true. Okay? So, this is somewhat surprising that you can actually manufacture a sequence which satisfies the given recurrence by just taking a root of this quadratic equation and just raising it to various powers. Now, of course, uh, in order, so if suppose g satisfied the the, the initial conditions, if it satis if it had the same initial values as f, then we would be done because then this would just be g has to equal f according to what we just said. So this would pretty much give us a formula for f of n. Okay. So of course, it's too much to expect that the initial values of g equal the given initial values of f. So observe what are the initial values of g in this case. So, if I put n equals 1, this is just r power 1 and if I put n equals 2, this is going to give me r square. Okay. And as I said, r and r square are in general some complex numbers, r is the root of this equation and of course, these may not be the given initial conditions. So, for instance, f of 1 and f of 2 were given to be p and q, these may fail to equal that. Okay. But this is a very good beginning, we already have at least a way of ensuring that the recurrence is satisfied. It is only the initial conditions that require some work. So, here is the, uh, here is a further case. Now, suppose let us assume the following. Suppose this quadratic equation has two roots, two distinct roots. Suppose that the quadratic equation that we wrote out has two distinct roots. Let us call them r1 and r2. Then observe we have two different solutions. So, let us call it g1 of n is r1 power n. Here is a sequence that satisfies the recurrence g2 of n equals r2 of n. So, both these sequences they satisfy at least the recurrence relation. And so, here is another key fact which tells you how to manufacture many more sequences which satisfy the recurrence starting with two such sequences. Okay. If you know two sequences which satisfy the recurrence, the key fact is the following. If you form any linear combination of these guys, so you define g of n, let g of n be some constant c1 times the first sequence plus another constant times the second sequence. Okay, this is what we, we have called once before a linear combination of the, these two sequences. Any linear combination will also satisfy the recurrence, that is the key thing. Okay. So, let g of n be defined like this with what are c1 and c2, they can in fact be any, any complex numbers. Then g of n also satisfies the recurrence. Okay, so, now what this gives us is a way of manufacturing tons and tons of sequences which satisfy the, the, which satisfy the given recurrence because we, have, we know r1 and r2 are distinct. So, here are two distinct solutions and here is a prescription which allows you to construct many more solutions starting with two solutions. 
Now that already gives us some hope that maybe one of these guys will in fact have the required initial values. Okay? So if we can somehow arrange these constants C1 and C2 such that G of n has the required initial values, then we would have found a formula for the, the required sequence f of n. So now the problem really reduces to the following. What we would like to do, we want to find constants such that g of 1 exactly gives you the required initial condition p and g of 2 gives you the required initial condition q. If we can do this, then f and g would, would automatically be equal. So observe if we can do this, then this would imply that the sequence f that we want must in fact equal the, the sequence g. Okay? And that would give you a formula for, for f of n because g of n is of course just given by a formula. It is given by c1 r1 power n plus c2 r2 power n. Okay? So let us just see this in, in the example that we want. So the, the case of uh, the sequence f of n that we started out with. So observe here where f of n was f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2. This is the, the same f that we started out with, the number of uh, uh, 0, 1 sequences of length n which do not contain two successive ones. So this is for n at least 3. And we had the following initial conditions, f of 1 is 2, f of 2 is 3. Okay, so here is our procedure. We start with a quadratic equation. So sometimes it is called the auxiliary equation. So it is the following quadratic equation here. It is x square equals x plus 1. We solve this equation. So how do we solve this? Well, we use the usual quadratic formula. So here is the quadratic equation. And here there are two roots. So let us write those two roots down. R1 equals uh, 1 plus root 5 by 2. And R2 is 1 minus square root of 5 by 2. Okay. So there are two, two distinct roots in this case. And so what does our prescription say? It says you look for solutions of the form. So let us form the sequence g of n. So let us define g to be a linear combination c1 r1 power n plus c2 r2 power n. So you define g in this way. This guy certainly satisfies the recurrence relation and all we want is for it to satisfy the initial condition. So now let us impose our conditions. So let us impose the following conditions. Uh, g of 1, we would like it to be 2 and g of 2, we would like it to be 3. So these are the two conditions that we would like to be satisfied. So what do these amount to? g of 1 is just c1 r1 plus c2 r2 g of 2 is c1 r1 squared plus c2 r2 squared. So what you now have are two equations for the two unknowns c1 and c2. Okay? So all we have to do is just solve these equations. So solve for the constants c1 and c2. Okay? So I will just give you the solution here. So exercise check that here are the, the, the choices that give you the required initial conditions. So C1 in this case is 3 plus root 5 by 2 times the square root of 5 and C2 is 3 minus square root of 5 by uh, minus 2 times square root 5. Okay, so here are the constants which you can just get by uh, solving these two linear equations for the constant C1 and C2. So what does that give you finally? Well, it gives you a solution to the, to the original problem. It says that the number of 0, 1 sequences which have no two successive ones is in fact given by the formula C1 times. So what does this imply? Finally, here is our conclusion. The number of 0, 1 sequences with no two successive ones must in fact be the same as, as G of n because it has the same initial conditions and the same recurrence. So this is just, if you wish, 3 plus root 5 by 2 root 5. That is a constant C1 times R1 power n. R1 is this. 
plus the constant C2. So, the constant C2 in this case is 3 minus root 5 with a minus 2 root 5 at the bottom times 1 minus root 5 by 2 power n. So, here is a formula for the function f of n that we wanted and it is rather surprising that you know that this will always work out to be a, a positive integer right as it should because f of n after all counts the certain number of configurations of a, of a kind and it is rather strange that with all these square root 5s floating around here that at the end of the day this always works out to be a positive integer ok. So, check for certain values of n you know just plug in various values of n to see that this in fact gives us uh, at least the first few terms correctly ok. So, uh, next time we will talk a little bit more about uh, these very same sequences and maybe where else they appear in other in they appear in a few other problems. So, we will talk a little bit more about that next time.